Welcome to Aspire to Wellbeing with Yoga. My name is Ali, and in today's yoga class, we are going to do a yoga flow to let go and find peace. So, if you're finding that you're holding on to any thoughts, self limiting beliefs, patterns of behaviors, or emotions that are disturbing your inner peace, then this is the class for you. I hope you enjoyed the practice. Please, as always, let me know, leave me a comment down below how you went. Also, whilst you're there, please subscribe if you haven't already and hit the notification bell. I do release yoga and yoga related content every week. If you do have further financial resources and you would like to support me on my endeavors to provide free yoga content out there for everybody, you can contribute for as little as $5 a month on my Patreon page and I've popped the link to that down below. Let's get into this beautiful flow. Let's begin in a comfortable seat. You can sit up against a wall if you need, otherwise sitting on a yoga block or on the earth. Just any comfortable position, feeling the hips grounded. You can take your wrists onto your thighs with the palms up. If you're wanting to receive a little more energy, you can also take them to your heart center to connect with yourself or any other position that feels right for you today. We're just going to take a few moments to listen and notice our breath without trying to change or control the breath. Just notice how easily we let go of the exhale. Even though we're not guaranteed another breath, we easily let go of the breath and trust that another inhale will come in. I'd just like to begin the class with one of my favorite quotes about yoga. It goes like this. The yoga pose is not the goal. Becoming flexible is not the goal. Standing on your hands is not the goal. The goal is serenity, balance, truly finding peace in your own skin. By the beautiful Rachel Brathen. And from here, let's come into all fours for some cat cow. Taking an inhale to arch your spine into cow pose and as you exhale, rounding into cat pose. Do this a few more times, trying to marry the breath and the movement together. Marrying the breath and the movement is a beautiful way to bring our mind into our body. And then from here, we'll tuck the toes under, coming into a downward facing dog and just taking some intuitive movement, whether that's pedaling out through the heels or bending and straightening the knees, or perhaps even a little twist side to side. Just listen to what your needs are and honor that. Do something that serves your needs. Let go of the need for it to be exactly like mine or anyone else's. And then here we'll take downward facing dog in stillness, really pressing the hands down into the earth, rooting down through the index finger as well. And then walking your feet up to the top of the mat for a ragdoll hang. Bend the knees as much as you need to here so that the, the body can rest on the thighs. And then if you're feeling like you are holding on to anything, just allow it to drop out of the crown of the head in this ragdoll pose. Tension, limiting self-beliefs, incessant thoughts, 
patterns of behaviour. Just let them go, leave them on the mat. And draw the belly in and start to roll yourself one vertebrae at a time, see curving your spine. Until you're into Dasana and then bringing your hands heart center. Covering the heart with the hands if you wish to acknowledge yourself. Take an inhale, reach the arms up. Surya Namaskar A, Sun A. Take a forward fold with your breath out. Halfway lift on the inhale. As you exhale, step back, drop to the knees straight away and come into Chaturanga Dandasana. Chest and hips land together. Take the feet a little wider, cobra pose. Using your back to lift, not your hands. Inhale to lift into your cobra and exhale to lower. Try to use the strength of your spine here, coming all the way through to downward facing dog. Inhale to tip your toes, exhale, bend the knees to the top of the mat, take a halfway lift, inhale and exhale, fold. Round down through the feet, rise up, Urdhva Hastasana, upward hands. Little back bend if you like, and then lead with the heart as you fold over the legs, following your breath down. Take a halfway lift, inhale, lengthen. As you exhale, Chaturanga Dandasana, you can drop to the knees or stay on your toes. Upward facing dog or cobra if you prefer. And then downward facing dog with the breath out. Inhale, tippy toes, look forward, no breath to the top of the mat, halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold. Ground down through the feet, rise up, inhale, reach the arms above the head and exhale, forward, fold. Halfway lift on the inhale, moving through a chaturanga, your choice, knees or toes, there's no right or wrong, better or worse, there's just conscious and unconscious decisions. Downward facing dog is where we'll meet. Let's come to tippy toes on the inhale. Forward to the top of the mat, halfway lift and bow down. Ground down through the heels, rise up on your inhale. Hands heart center. Reaching the arms up and sitting the hips back and down into your chair pose. Just notice the option you're taking here in chair pose. If you have a belief that you're not strong enough or good enough, perhaps challenge this by coming a little deeper. For me personally, I find I always push myself and judge myself too much. So I'm gonna take my hands to the heart center and take the pressure off of my shoulders for a moment. You do what serves you. And then on the inhale, we're gonna lift the left knee to sky for stork pose. The left inner knee and the right hip point, imagine a line drawing them in a little closer. You'll feel your bunda engage for support. And then step that left leg long back into your arrowhead lunge. The right knee should be over the right toe but grounding down through the heel to take the pressure out of the knees. Left arm sweeps forward, all the way around into a big circle through your warrior two. Just check that your right knee is in line with your middle toes. And then reverse warrior, Viparita Virabhadrasana. Really straighten that right arm to get a beautiful side body stretch. And then carve all the hands to the earth into your vinyasa, chaturanga of your choice, a back bend, upward dog or cobra, once again your choice. And then downward facing dog with your breath out. Inhale to tippy toes, exhale, bend the knees to the top of the mat, take a halfway lift, inhale and exhale, fold. Ground down through the feet, rise up, inhale, lift the arms, 
chair pose. Remember, something that is going to serve you, that you'd like to let go of. Choose an option that meets those needs. On the inhale, take the right leg up to the sky, stalk pose. Feel that bandha, that support through your pelvic floor as, as you pull the inner knee and the hip towards each other. And then as you exhale, nice, slow step back into arrowhead. Be aware if you've come out of this pose by bringing the knee over the ankle instead over the toe. Notice if that's a habit or if there is something deeper in that experience. And then coming into warrior two. Adjust your feet, make sure you're engaging your outer glute to leave that. Reverse your warrior. And then Chaturanga Dandasana, moving through your flow, which at any point you can skip the Chaturanga and Upward Facing Dog. And you can always meet in Downward Facing Dog. Inhale to tippy toes, exhale, bend the knees to the top of the mat, halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold. Let's flow this one breath per movement. Inhale to lift, exhale, chair pose. Left knee to sky on the inhale for stalk pose. And then as you exhale, arrowhead, keep pulling the heart forward. Inhale, left arm reaches forward and around. Warrior two, keep flowing all the way through to peaceful warrior on your inhale. And then as you exhale, moving through your vinyasa. Inhale, filling up the heart space with beautiful breath. And then as you exhale, letting go of what no longer supports you. Inhale to tippy toes, exhale, bend the knees to the top of the mat, no breath, halfway lift, inhale, exhale, fold. Root down through the feet, rise up on the inhale, your version of chair pose as you exhale. Right knee to sky, stalk pose. Arrowhead with your breath out. Right arm sweeps forward and around. Feel the beauty of the flow here, the ease of the flow through warrior two. Peaceful warrior on your inhale. And then back down to the earth as you exhale. Roll the shoulder heads back, crack the heart open on the inhale. Downward facing dog, breath out. Inhale, tippy toes, exhale, bend the knees to the top of the mat, halfway lift, and exhale, fold. Ground down through the feet, rise up, inhale. Exhale, hands heart center, samasta to here, or hands over heart. Take an inhale. As you exhale, chair pose. Left knee to sky, stalk pose. This time, taking tree pose. You can either take the foot above the knee or below the knee or even on the earth. And with the arms, take an option that's going to serve you, either hands overhead or if like me, you're trying to be a little more self-compassionate and easy on yourselves, perhaps just take the hands heart centre. Left knee to sky, stalk pose. And then step that left leg back so you're in Crescent lunge, high lunge, Anjay Nasana. Hug the inner thighs in for that support. Lift the heart. Come deep into your pose or where it serves you. And then as you exhale, Skandasana, side lunge to the back of the mat. The left knee will bend. You can come low or you can come into your strength a little bit higher. I'll leave that up to you today so you can really think about how you are with yourself. Giving yourself the opportunity to let go of patterns and self-beliefs that don't work for you anymore. 
then let's come to the top of the mat, left hand down, right arm to sky for a twisted lunge. And then step back into your vinyasa, chaturanga, urdha mukha, mukha svanasana. Right leg to sky, three legged dog. As you exhale, take your tiger curl, step the foot through, drop the knee and release the foot. Coming into a low crescent lunge now. Shifting the hips forward, drawing the pubic bone up towards the navel so the core is engaged. From here, the strength through your lower body, providing the opportunity for your upper body to open. And then we'll take half Hanumanasana, half splits pose. Turn the sitting bones back here. Feels like you're sticking your bottom out. You may not get all the way down to the earth, but remember, that's not really the goal. The yoga pose is not the goal. So don't worry what it looks like. And then from here, we're just going to bend into that front knee and come into our pigeon pose. Roll all five toes behind you and then fold over the legs. Now, if this isn't serving you, if you're feeling this in your knee, Take a modification by lying down on your back and crossing the right ankle over the left knee. You get the same stretch. It's just your way. Let go of the need for it to be anybody else's. From here, we're gonna press back through the hands, right leg to sky, three-legged dog, and then single leg triunga or traditional chaturanga back bend of choice upward dog or cobra and find downward facing dog come to the top of the mat take a halfway lift inhale exhale bow round down rise up breathe in exhale chair pose Right knee to sky, stalk pose. Finding your variation of tree pose. There's no right or wrong poses. It's just your conscious or subconscious choice. There's just your conscious or unconscious decisions. Right leg back through stalk pose and then take a long step to the back of the mat. Anjayanasana, feeling the strength through the lower body by hugging the inner thighs in. Heart lifts to the heavens. Keep the breath flowing. Remember, don't hold on to the breath. And then coming into side lunge skandasana, right knee bends to the back of your mat. Any thoughts that come up, just acknowledge them, listen to them and observe them. But then let them go. Don't engage with the storytelling. Then to the top of the mat, right hand down, left arm to sky, twisted low lunge. Three-legged dog. And through your Chaturanga Tadasana. Upward facing dog. And downward facing dog. This time the left leg will lift for three-legged dog. Take your tiger curls, step the foot through. Low crescent lunge. Keep pressing the hips forward, but don't compromise by letting the or go. Keep the pubic bone drawn up towards the navel. Being at peace with wherever you are in this pose. And then once again, half Hanuman, making sure that you're authentic in your alignment here, turning the sitting bones back. And if you've got this attachment to having to get your head to your foot 
your head to your knee no matter what alignment you're in. Notice that, ask yourself why, there's no judgment, but perhaps you'll discover something about some of your beliefs. And then from here, coming into pigeon pose, either with me laying forward over that front leg or you could definitely lie down on your back and take a figure four stretch instead. Whenever we take modifications or something a little different, it's a beautiful learning opportunity about how we treat ourselves. Listen to your breath. If you feel like it's gone, bring it back. And then coming through your chaturanga, one leg or two, upward facing dog, leading in downward facing dog. Inhale to tip your toes, exhale, bend the knees, jump all the way through to your seated position. Take the legs out long, reach the arms up to sky, and fold over the legs for Dandasana. If you have any sciatica issues, feel free to please bend the knees softly. Notice if you're forcing yourself once again into this pose. Instead, perhaps follow the wisdom of the breath. Feel the ebb and flow of the breath, the gentle rise and fall. And allow the body to gently lift on the inhale and surrender into the pose with the exhale. And as you follow that breath, instead of force your way through, notice the peace that it provides. From here, we're going to take half hero pose. So taking the left leg, bending it so the ankle is by your hips, lift yourself up, tuck the tailbone under. You can come down onto the hands or the elbows, or if it feels okay in your knees, you can absolutely lie down on your back. You're just wanting to feel a sensation through the front of the thighs, the front of the hips. Remember, the yoga pose is not the goal. So wherever it is for you, it's perfect. Just allow the body to surrender to the earth using the beautiful force of gravity to anchor us down. And then gently making your way up, let's take that to the other side. Roll out the calf muscle out the way if you need to. Make sure you're lengthening the tailbone down towards the feet so there's un not unnecessary strain through the lower back and then find your version of half hero pose. See if you can be at peace with wherever you are. It's a lesson that for me in this pose, my body's never been able to do it one leg at a time. Perhaps for you, you can do both legs in this hero pose and if that's you please go ahead it's your yoga practice and then making your way up giving the legs a little shake you're going to come into Gomukhasana now, so crossing the left knee over the right knee, pulling the feet out to the sides. If that's not feeling comfortable, you can sit easy cross leg position. But if you can bind the knees, take the feet out to the side, try to draw the feet towards the top of the mat, towards your knees a little more, rather than tucked by your hips. And then take the left arm over the right arm under, interlacing the hands. 
and forward fold. If it's too much on your shoulders, feel free to let go of the bind. You just want to feel this pose in the outer hips. Noticing if you're holding your breath, if the pose becomes too strong. Noticing if your mind is leaving your body as a distraction. Seeing if you can find peace within the pose. And then let's rise up and take that to the other side. So either easy cross leg or the right knee over the left knee, pressing the feet forward. Right arm over, left arm under, interlacing the hands behind your back. You can wrap onto your shirt if you need to. And taking the bind, feeling free to let go of the bind whenever that serves you better. As we let go of the toxic thoughts that we might have, the negative thoughts. As we let go of the limiting self-beliefs, patterns of behaviours that no longer serve us. We're inevitably going to feel more at peace in our own bodies. From here, our final pose, perhaps our final challenge or opportunity to see how we are with ourselves in our wide leg forward fold, Uddha Vista Konasana. Once again, don't worry if you're not folding all the way forward. The aim is to feel a nice opening through the inner hip, wherever you are, in order to feel that sensation staying authentic to you in your alignment not in somebody else's. Being completely okay with and at peace with wherever you are. In your next inhale, let's come up. Give the legs a little shake out. And roll yourself all the way down onto your back. We'll take a little happy baby, Ananda Balasana here, taking the outside of the feet, pulling the knees down towards the earth. Little rock side to side if that feels good. And then our final pose, the pose of surrender, Shavasana. As a yoga teacher, I have to say that this is often the pose that most people find difficult and challenging. It's hard to completely let go and surrender. We see people wriggle around, take extra poses or stretches, even leave the class. It's really difficult to let go and to surrender, not be distracted by movement or anything else. But as with anything, practice. With practice, it becomes more easeful. I hope you enjoyed the class today and I'll leave you in this beautiful but challenging pose of Shavasana for as long as you like. Have a great day.